Hey guys, if everybody doesn't mind making sure their phones and computers are muted, that'd be great. I think Ron is on. Hey guys, Ron is, if y'all know, she's got um, very spotty connection. So she's trying to get connected right now. So hang tight. It's good to see you guys. Hi, Grandma. Hi. <laughs> Yes. Yes, we were having huh? If y'all lose me, um we'll we'll figure it out. All right, so to get started. I was going to try to go into town, but I have a steep drive and um I still got snow here and I was trying to will go my truck in folder just punch it in hey Rana <laughs> you're you're so, running, anyway, you're cutting yes. out you're cutting out really bad try just turning off your video and just using the audio it won't pull so much and just see if that works better just for real quick yeah because you're we can't understand it very well the phone hold on all right she's gonna try to just get do it from her phone Okay, thumbs up if you can hear me. All right, I apologize. Uh, I was going to go into town and make this easier on myself, but we still have snow and ice here, and I was afraid I couldn't get up my drive. Um, I did, but I wasn't for sure. Um, the roads are fine, but not where I live. <laughs> They don't go into the forest, so um, I'm kind of in the middle of nowhere. Next Monday, we should be warming up. So next Monday, I'll go down to the lodge and do this better. I want to apologize. So let's get right to it so uh, we don't miss anything. Tonight, I want to I want to catch you guys up. Um, on First of all, thank you to Pastor Chris Wilson last Monday night holding down the fort for me. I wouldn't have put any pastor on here unless I had full faith in, in their ability to bless you. And uh, I have several on here that I can trust. And uh, I just wanted him to, to speak to you and I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I haven't been able to watch it myself because I can't get it to play, <laughs> but I'll catch myself up. I want to go back there's been a lot going on prophetically. And how many remember that when I told you that the Lord woke me up 
uh, about two in the morning before I got on an airplane to head to Murchison and spoke to me. I said, Lord, you're going to have to tell me about 2022. I know it's part of the greater, but what is going on? What is, what are you saying in 2022? And the Lord said, rest. And so we've been talking about the rest. Well, there has been more um, uh, prophetic happenings. And that's what I want to talk about tonight before I lose you all together. Let's just pray that my one little bar holds out for us. Father, we ask that you would anoint this one bar on my cell phone so that I can continue to speak to your people. Lord, I'm not going to move or breathe, but just keep my signal long enough to say what I got to say in the name of Jesus. Uh, most of you guys know I've moved. I'm in a whole new place, a whole new thing. I've been knowing for uh, quite a while that something was going to take place when I moved. And I didn't move in the middle of nowhere for no reason. I have multiple reasons why I feel. My, one of the reasons is I felt like uh, my people are here, that I'm going to, my husband and I are going to pastor. And we don't know when. We don't know what that looks like. We're basically just being led by the Holy Spirit on that. And so we, we wanted a place where pastors could also come. Harrison Ministries, uh, we are really called to leadership and to speak into their lives and to encourage them. And uh, some of them on a day, I talk to pastors every day, several times a day. And we talk about things that they don't have any other place to talk to about. And um, so I'm, I'm very blessed that God has used Jason and I to, um, to be able to minister to people. I know that Pastor Steve in Kiaka, Iowa, uh, Jason got to speak into his life for about 45 minutes last week and got to really bless him. And so I was, I was, I was very happy about that. But anyway, so there's lots of reasons, but I was not thinking uh, of all the reasons why God was going to bring me here. All I knew was that prophetically speaking, there had been a, a, a switch take place and that there was a rest that was coming about. Now, is everybody going to enter into this rest? No. Mm -mm. Most people don't even know what I'm what I'm talking about. And. So if you need more information, when we next Monday, when I have a better signal, we'll go into that. But I want to talk to you about some prophetic things that's been happening since I've been in this house. The first night I was in this house, the Lord allowed me to sleep all night long. <laughs> like I went to bed like at eight or nine o'clock and slept to 730, eight o'clock the next morning. Y'all know that does not happen with me. One thing is I was pretty much exhausted. This was, this was a huge move. Um, then the second night, I'm going to share with you some things. The second night I was here, I was very rested and an angel appeared in, uh, to me and say, well, I don't believe that. Well, then, then this is not your Zoom because I believe in the supernatural. I believe in angel visitations. I believe in healing. I believe in the supernatural. I believe in prophecy. And uh, I believe in those kind of things. And so do I have angels show up all the time? No, but I, when they do, they do. They, I see them clearly. And I actually drew this, this particular one. This angel was so bright. I couldn't look at it. I knew it was an angel, a messenger of the Lord. I knew it was um, not an, a, a bad messenger. I knew it was from him and but I couldn't hardly look at it all I saw and I, I don't know if well you can't see I'm in the dark um I could see the the head but not any features and I saw the body and the last two angels I've seen their shoulders come to a point and I don't know if I'm seeing I uh, now uh when I saw Gadal which was the angel of greater who's in Michael's army what I saw of his armor was his armor came to a point. Um, so this visitation that I had, um, I, I couldn't pinpoint uh, any type of garment. It was just literally bright, bright neon white to the point of almost I couldn't look at it. 
And then the angel spoke, and this is what it said, clear as a bell, sure as I'm sitting here. He said, now that you have unpacked, it's time to come home. Can you imagine how startled I was? <laughs> I thought, well, that's, I normally call my mom and tell her the things that I see in here. I thought, I'm not telling her that one. <laughs> but he said, now that you have unpacked, it's time to come home. Well, that whole day, I went to cleaning baseboards and I went to clean, you know, because I'm, I got to clean. I, I'm cleaning all the time. I was, I was on the floor scrubbing floors and baseboards and doors. And, but I had this, this visitation on my mind. And at first, when I heard him say it, it did startle me a little bit because I thought, Lord, surely I didn't do all this work and move all the way out here. And now you're going to call me home. And I started giving him reasons of why. I'm not ready. <laughs> and basically I kept saying, you know, I got, I got a 10 year old and, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, and the finally I had no fear about it, but I remember saying, Lord, don't let me leave this planet until you have finished with me. And I did not mean ministry. Hear me ministers. Don't focus so much on your ministry. You can focus so much on ministry that you forget you're the one who needs to decrease. Not your minute. Your ministry will follow whatever increase that God puts in your life will happen because you've decreased and he has increased and your ministry will follow that increase. True ministry. Um, I can't take credit. It keeps you from taking credit. You've, you've ever heard ministers that like to take credit for what God does in their life? They'll say, I prayed for this person and God did, I did this. And I put my hand on this person and this happened. And, and this, you know, and we don't mean to, sometimes we, we talk like that just out of habit and we, our heart's not uh, ugly or anything. And then there's some people out there that they really want credit for what God is doing. That's a very, very dangerous place to be in because God is a, such a jealous God. He's not going to allow uh, you to share in, and that's, he wants all the glory. And so uh, that's why we don't focus on ministry per se. We're focusing on our own personal lives and believing that whatever gift or ministry is in our life will then begin to follow the change and transformations that takes in our personal life. And so when this angel said, now that you have unpacked, it's time to come home, I began to say, Lord, there is something in what that angel said that means something I'm not saying, but as I trust you today, come on, somebody, you need to trust, somebody needs to hear me right now, in every situation, in every moment, you have got to trust the Lord. I don't care how bleak. I don't care how scary. I don't care how offset. We got to learn to trust the Lord in all things. The Bible says in all things, give thanks for this is the will of God concerning you. Can y'all tell I haven't preached in a week? Y'all going to get an earful tonight. Okay, so the Bible says this is the will of God. Everybody's wanting to know about the will of God. The will of God is to give thanks. That doesn't mean giving thanks when good things are happening and things are going your way and there's money in the bank. He says in all things, in all things, began to give thanks. Why? Because it what it's a part of your decreasing. It's a part of his increasing. When you can give thanks to God, when all hell is breaking loose, then what happens is that is that is speaking to your atmosphere. No matter what is going on around me, I trust him. My faith is not in what I see. My faith is not in what I hear. My faith is in not what I just know. My faith is in what his word says and how it's spoken over my life. All right. So I'm going throughout my day and I'm thinking about it's now it's time to go home. Now it's time to come home. Immediately, I went back to that dream years ago. I preached this in Murchison. I think I did, or, or Restoring Hope, one of them. And when I had the dream, three dreams in one night, 
where I was digging the road. We preached on here. I won't go into the whole thing. As I was digging the road, my father comes to me and says, God is getting ready to call you home. Remember that? And I got startled. This dream happened like 20 something years ago. And I woke up after I woke up, I went back to sleep. And remember the dream repeated itself. But this time, instead of my father, it was my mother. The father and the mother in those two dreams represented the father and the Holy Spirit. The mother came, my mother came in the dream and said, Rana, the Lord is getting ready to call you home. That was 20 something years ago. Now, so I begin to think about why is God speaking to me through this angel? It's time to go home. When I was reading today, and I'm going to go there just a minute, in Isaiah, the subtitle of where the Lord spoke to me, Isaiah 12 and Isaiah 14. And it was actually a prophetic word for Pastor Aaron Crabb and Amanda. And the, I don't normally call them on Sunday mornings. Uh, but the Lord had woke me up extra early and I had called them that Sunday morning. If you actually go to Restoring Hope Church last Sunday's uh, service, you'll hear that story. Amanda begins to talk about it and minister. It's very powerful service. Um, so I've heard, I've, I've, I can't get the whole service downloaded. But anyway, um, I had that on my mind, not knowing that prophesying to Pastor Aaron that I was going to receive interpretation further on the season that we're in. We're not entering into rest this season. There is a rest. We're in it. Say, well, I don't feel like I'm in it. Well, you need to study that more. While I was giving him Isaiah, I turned to Isaiah, I think it was chapter 11, and the subtitle of Isaiah chapter 11 is this, coming home. Isaiah chapter 11, coming home. I was, I was, my mind was blown. I didn't get the chance to, to go all into that. Let me tell you this, that will blow your mind. When you study the word home, it means heaven on our way to heaven but guess what else it means it means rest now that you've unpacked it's time to rest now that you've battled for a season it's time to rest now resting doesn't mean taking a nap y'all remember that church i told y'all about that really happened where everybody, that pastor called his whole church into a season of rest and they all brought pillows Listen, mm -mm, mm -mm. we ain't ignorant. That ain't what this means. Resting is, is a place. Not only it's where if there's a battle that's coming, when you trust the Lord, when you come to a place where you're, that your relationship with him is on point, then what happens is he begins, Charlie and I was talking about this earlier. His, he begins to fight your battles immediately. He's like, you know what? I got this. I got this. So let me tell you what happened. The next night, uh, about three or four o'clock in the morning, I began to see Pastor Aaron coming off of a tour bus. Now, I knew that that wasn't the Kraft family bus or anything like that. I know that the Kraft family's on tour right now and all that other. But I saw this bus and I knew it meant something I knew it meant something different I'm going to where I wrote it down here it's hard for me to see this bus anytime you dream about a vehicle it represents a type of ministry so a bus would represent a large ministry or a, 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 a the vehicle to your destiny and I saw him his, he was so exhausted that I saw his head bobbling around and he was trying and in and, 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 and re, when you're just sitting with Pastor Aaron, he's he tries to be very attentive to you. I mean, you could just be talking nonsense, but because he has a very humble and kind heart, he will still sit there and give you a, a, be attentive because he's just a very kind person. 
Now, I, if you walk up to me and you're being all nonsense, I'm going to slap the devil out of you. But Pastor Aaron, he's, he's going to be more kind and more humble, and he's going to be more attentive. So in this dream, he was be, trying to be attentive to me. And I looked over at Amanda, and I did, she didn't speak to me, but I knew what she was thinking. And even in, in this dream, in her thoughts, she was a little spitfire. And she, in her thought, I heard her say, can't you see him? <laughs> And I answered back to her and I said, well, of course I can see him. And in this dream, I turned to him and I didn't say anything to him, but I began to take jewels, stones, jewels off of me and put them on him. I just started putting them on him. When I called him and talked to him, I didn't know what his I hadn't talked to them in a couple of weeks because it's so hard to be on the phone out here and I hadn't known what has been going on but the Lord began to minister to him about uh, 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 Isaiah he said Isaiah I'm just going to go there Isaiah and the reason why I'm telling you the vision and dream that I spoke to Pastor Aaron is because as I was speaking to him otherwise I would have never told y'all none of that um the reason why I'm telling you is because when I was speaking to him uh, that Sunday morning at his church, the Lord was speaking to me about rest a little bit more. Before I came up, the Lord spoke and he said, Isaiah 12 and Isaiah 14. So I read to pastor, hold on guys, I can't get my Bible to turn the page here kind of in the dark so let me for first of all this is 12 and in that day thou shalt say O lord now this is part of this rest okay because chapter 11 is subtitled coming home and in that day thou shalt say O lord i will praise thee Though thou wast angry with me, that anger is turned away and thou comforts me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid for the Lord Jehovah, circle Jehovah, because look that word up, Jehovah, right there, uh, is my strength and my song. Okay. That's confirming Psalms 91, by the way, right there. He also is become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. Remember, joy is not an emotion. It is not an emotion that you feel. Joy is a fruit of the spirit. Okay. And in that day shall ye praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, make mention that his name is exalted. We're, we're talking about this is what's happening in the rest. Sing unto the Lord. Some of you need to look up that word, sing. Go to your blue letter Bible, look up that word, sing. How are you going to sing unto the Lord if you don't understand its fullness? of its meaning sing unto the lord for he hath done exceeding uh, excellent things this is known in all of the earth and i want you to circle or highlight done okay quick english lesson here it says he hath done come on you need to look at those words hath done I don't care how your day is. I don't care how tomorrow, what hell's going to come tomorrow. He has already made a way of escape for you. He hath done. He's already done. The Bible says here, you're reading it, excellent things. He's not just doing good by you. He is doing excellent things for you, through you, around you. You need to declare this. You need to know this is what, this is what the rest is. The rest is his abundance. And there's so much more. I mean, there's so much more. We're going to dive, dive, dive deeper into this rest. Okay. Sing unto the Lord for he had done excellent things. This is known in all of the earth. 
cry out and shout, that inhabitant of Zion. Zion is not a place, it's a people. Just like when you see the word Israel in the Bible, when you see the word Israel, that's not a place, it's a people, okay? For great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of these. Now, let me find where I wanted to go. Let me take you, before I take you to this next scripture, let me recall something to you. Do you remember when we talked about the time, this is before I moved, that the Lord allowed me to see two spirits that were going to come up on the church. Primarily, they were attacking leadership. They were going to attack leadership. Remember, I said one was real tall and lanky, remember? And the other one was half his size. They worked together side by side. Do y'all remember me saying that? Thumbs up, because I can't hear you. Yes. Okay. Now, when I saw the two spirits, I asked them, I asked the Lord, I said, who are they? And he said, I'm just going to show y'all something. This is about the rest. This is about where we're at. He said, they are mental. They are called mental. What their job is, they have been released right now upon the earth. They are going to try to go after leadership. Now, that doesn't mean they're not going to go after the remnant, go after the church. Here's the thing. The reason why, when I say mental, this is what he meant. They are primarily assigned to kill, steal, and destroy what you believe. They're mental. I'm just going to prove it in the Bible. As soon as I can find it in the Bible. <laughs> it is in Isaiah 14. Let me see. I may have to read this whole chapter to you because I, my Bible, I have, listen, I've got too many Bibles. Okay, I found it. I'm just going to start at verse 10. All they speak and say unto thee, art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Let's keep going. Let's see. I think it's verse 12. Verse 12 is where I want to go. Now, listen. Um, this is talking about Satan here, okay? How art thou fallen from heaven? This is talking about Satan. Oh, um, I want to say, I don't see Cam, but I have, I have I gotten the message about Cam and I've had her on my heart. One particular day, I was coming out of my little girl's room and Cam came in my spirit and I began to, I stopped what I was doing and praying for her. So this is the word of Isaiah 14, verse 12 is talking about Satan. How, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which does weaken the nations? Um, for thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I want you to, if you was to stand up, okay, if you was to stand up, Pastor Steve is standing up. Pastor Steve, I want you to point to your head. Yes, see where he's pointing? That would be what of him? That's not south of him, is it? If you were to, if, if Pastor Steve was to be standing up south, okay, is his feet. Are we in agreement? Thumbs up. And y'all didn't think women knew north, east, west, south. And I know, listen. <laughs> so if south is his feet, Pastor Steve, where is north? Your head, point to your head. If your feet is south, your head is north. Where did I tell you your, your heart is? The solace realm. 
The heart is not the che- the muscle in your chest. It is the heart is your soulless realm. It is the the where your imagination. It's where the prophetic is. Actually, it's where that's where you believe. The Bible says, "What a man thinketh in his heart." Everybody, point to your head. This is the north. What everybody, y'all should see yourself. <laughs> Simon says. <laughs> That I just read it to you that Satan sits in the north, right? All right, now listen. When he said it, now that you've unpacked, it's time to come home. Not only was God speaking to me, I'm getting ready. I'm, I mean, I'm getting ready to not only bless, I'm going to call. You're going to have wells you did not dig, vineyards you did not plow and grow. You know the scripture. It's a time of abundance. But right now, this demons that have been released upon the earth is after people's thoughts. He's sitting in the north. Look around your local news. Look around at the news. People are insane right now. There's a, there's a spirit of insanity. Uh, me and my mother-in-law was talking about this not too long ago. I said, people are insane right now. Like there's people uh, um, like Charlene, her son's a fireman. I won't go into it, but he, he had to go on a call that it was insane. Some guy just went on a killing spree of his own family. Just all of a sudden, it, and people are being attacked where? In the North in their mind. Satan is not after your church and your ministry and your children and your money and your husband and this. He's after what you believe. If he can get your belief, he can torment your mind. That's why people are doing things they wouldn't normally do. I've heard from some of you saying, you know what? I'm normally not this way, but today I've just been extra aggravated or this today I've been extra this or I've been, I've been uh, pushed to my limit. Normally I'm more, more got my feet planted on the ground better. That's because the enemy has been released to come after your rest. He's not going to attack something unless he knows for a fact the season. See, the enemy knows the season. He knows the season. It's we need to be educated through the word of God what season we're in, God said, I'll do nothing without, I'll reveal it to the prophets. Yes, but don't wait for a prophet to tell you. You need to, uh, as you study the word, as you listen to the Holy Spirit lead and guide you, he will begin to speak to you from the word of God. And you should not, in this season, part of the rest, don't make decisions. Don't be haste about things. Consult the Holy Spirit. And another thing I'm seeing in in a pattern is sometimes we're trying to be the Holy Spirit to other people. There's some people that get in a bind and because we all want to help one another, we start helping immediately. And listen, don't misunderstand me. There's nothing wrong with us. We're supposed to give and help one another and stand guard and and we're we're supposed to do that. But sometimes you can help somebody and they're leaning towards you more than they are the Holy Spirit. It's kind of like I I was talking to somebody. It's kind of like those that have ever had been a nurse or you've ever had any medical problem. They'll say, you know, if I have a, a, a temperature, you know, when you have a temperature, most people immediately want to start getting that temperature down. But that temperature is actually designed to fight infection. And a nurse and a doctor will say, let's leave this temperature. Let's watch it. Let's not let it spike too quickly because spiking going from one temperature to a high temperature very quickly can be dangerous. But a temperature, you are a well-oiled machine. The Bible says that you're made in his image. God did not 
uh, 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 make you halfway. You know that you are made to heal yourself. Your body is made to heal. It gives you warning. That temperature is actually fighting infection. Some people get upset because, and this is kind of gross, but I don't mean to, well, y'all know me. Some people get upset and just say, well, I'm sick of this because they have diarrhea or they're vomiting. That when you have diarrhea, I don't know how we went here, but here we go. Your body is getting rid of something that doesn't belong in your stomach. So the next time you find yourself in a private spot having that moment, you need to be thanking God for all things. Because as you're sitting there complaining that you're dying, your body is trying to release something that doesn't belong to it. Sometimes we jump too quickly uh, and we speak things. Uh, I'm sick or I'm this or I'm that. When your body is designed to do certain things, we jump to what, we, what, what, what we've been taught, what everybody else is saying. We need to know more of who he is, who we are in him, and we need to trust the Lord. I remember when I had three doctors to tell me I couldn't have a baby. Adopt. I couldn't have a baby. And finally, I got pregnant with Taylor. And I remember I vomited and vomited and vomited. I mean, I vomited. I didn't have morning sickness. I had all the time sickness. And let me tell you something. When you've been told that you can't have a child and you're vomiting because you're pregnant, I would literally hang my head over a toilet and vomit and thank the God, thank God. I would vomit and say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. And vomit some more. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Say so that sounds ridiculous. No, it wasn't. That I don't even know how we got here. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, in order to, to operate in this rest, we're going to have to mature in some areas. We don't need to jump immediately to the thoughts that's going on in the north. Because of this, the Bible says that there are voices in the city we talked about this that means there's voices around us there's opinions you can get on facebook right now and see a thousand opinions a thousand things that are going on there's voices around you you can google anything right now some of it's true some of it's not true you can get on pinterest there's voices there's millions of voices in the city now and you're trying to hear the voice through these just through the voices in the city then the Bible says, then there is voices in the temple. Point to the north. Point to the north. Who's in the north? I just read it to you. Satan sits at the north. So now we got the Bible warned us. He said there is voices around you. Influence. I bet you everybody on here that's ever gotten in trouble with anything you didn't get there by yourself. You were influenced by somebody or something. That's because there's voices in the city. Then there's voices in the temple. Then the Bible says, or that could say, then there's voices in the north. But then it says, but then there is the voice of thy Lord God. God's voice is the only thing that you need. It's going to help you navigate your rest. You need to, you need to say, well, I'm not, I'm not sure if I know his voice. I'm not sure if he's ever spoke to me. Hear my heart. If you're redeemed by the blood of the lamb and saved, God is always speaking to you. He loves you more than you can imagine. Well, say, well, I don't know that. He is always speaking. And the thing about him speaking is when he speaks, he's creating. Every time he opens his mouth, it's creating. And I just read to you in Isaiah, he said, I'm doing, I've done excellent things. I wonder sometimes how many excellent things I've missed because I came in agreement with the voice in the north. How many excellent things have I missed? How many excellent things did I miss because I was influenced by that my surroundings. How many excellent things have I missed because I, I believed my bank account instead of his nature being Jehovah Jireh? How many excellent things have I missed that he's already given me? I'm not waiting on him. We talked about that. 
Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up being eagles. That doesn't mean to sit in a yoga pose and hum. That means you're serving him. Have you been to a restaurant? You sit there for a few minutes. Someone's going to come to your table and they're there to serve you. They're there to wait upon you. You don't, you go to a restaurant, you don't have to go get your own ice and your own water and your food. You don't have to cook it. You don't have to clean it up. They're there to serve you. That's rest. Those that serve God will be renewed in their, their strength. They shall mount up on wings. And we talked about all that. I'll go back on one, some of the Zooms. We talked, to, we broke that scripture down, right? We did, right? <laughs> Was it you guys I taught that to? <laughs> yes. And so the enemy, I wanted tonight to take this moment to tell you that there is a release of, an, of a devil. And he is, he is there to attack what you believe. He is there to make you be fearful. He's there to make you feel like you're in lack and in poverty. He's there to, to bring um, pain. He's there to do all these things. And if you come in agreement you, you're, you, and you begin to speak from your fear, you become a self-proclaiming prophecy. But the Lord is saying right now, I've, I'm calling my people to arrest. Let me, fight. I've got excellent things in store for you. Excellent things. I've already made a way. I am your rear guard. This is your time. And let me tell you where this rest is going to go. It leads to glory. You haven't seen, you and I have not seen glory yet. We've seen some powerful things, but we are getting where God is calling the remnant up and out. He wants to manifest the fullness of who he is. He won't release the fullness of who he is on a people that's wasted. We're going to have to quit being so emotional. We're going to have to be stronger. We're going to have to Think about what we are coming in agreement with. We have to think about what we say. Guard what you think. Guard your heart. Be on purpose about this all the time. But the enemy sits in the north because he wants to be acknowledged. Every time you're obedient to your fear, You've just acknowledged the enemy. Fear is only fear when you pay attention to it. When you give fear attention. But the minute that somebody needs to hear me with this, I'm talking to somebody in particular. I'm not sure which one. But fear is only fear when you pay attention to it. You quit paying attention to it and it has no other place to, but to go. So I am really surprised. Y'all know that we're doing this on like a little bitty one bar. <laughs> and I'm in a little cubby hole in my daughter's room, a little like a dormer window thing. Um, let me see if I wrote anything else down. God is calling us home. He's calling us home. He's calling us. He's preparing us for heaven. Not We're not being prepared to, I'm not saying we're dying. And we'll, of course, we're all dying. But I, you know what I'm saying? He's preparing us. He's making it plain. So that we can experience and never forget that we're in a process of decreasing. We're in the decreasing. He's in the increasing. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I give you praise. 
Lord, I thank you, Father, for these people on this Zoom. I thank you, Father, for this one bar that's lasted this long. I'm afraid it's going to go out. But Lord, you have kept this. You have kept this. And I praise you right now. We're all stepping into this rest. We're going to benefit from the rest right now. We're going to go deeper in this rest on these Monday nights. We're going to understand. We're going to walk in the fullness of who you are this year. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. Hallelujah. I feel like we need to just for a few minutes. I wanted to share prophetically this vision of this angel with you. I give you praise. Now that we've unpacked, it's time to come home. It's time to learn how to live in the rest. It's time to abide. It's time to trust the Lord. It's time to trust him. Lean not to your own understanding, but stay faithful to what you know. I know it's hard sometimes, but I just feel like I need to remind you. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing. I thank you because we're not going to waste this time of rest, but we're stepping into this place. I thank you, Father, because our, our, our territory is expanding. Our tents are being stretched, Father. I thank you because we are no longer going to be attentive to the voices in the city. We're no longer going to be attentive to the voice that sits in the north, but we are going to be attentive to your voice. Father, I pray, Lord, that, that it would become clear. I pray right now for favor. I pray, Father, that when we hear your voice, that we would know it. I ask that you would bring a prophetic knowing to everybody under the sound of my voice. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I give you praise. I give you praise in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you, Father, for the bodies that need to be healed. We thank you, Father. We thank you. We ask, Father, for those that have been sick in their body. We thank you for the healing manifestation to take place right now. I come against the spirit of fear. Somebody is battling anxiety and fear. I, I know one person, but that's not who I'm talking to. I'm talking about someone that I don't communicate with at all. I come against the spirit of fear. I come against that spirit of confusion. I come against the spirit that you're not been able to think straight. I come against the short-term memory. I come against that spirit that's been telling you that, that, that you're going to have a dementia or you're going to have some type of that grandma had it or papa had it. And so therefore, no, I come against that right now in the name of Jesus. I speak clarity over you. I speak right now over someone that's needing a door open to open the door right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for new beginnings. The Lord also spoke through this angel in the last two days that we're coming up and out to a new place, a new place in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I give you praise. I give you praise. There are things in us that's going to die. Listen, before I let you go, I want to share with you. I wasn't going to, but I think I'm going to now anyway, because I don't like to, I don't like to keep anything from you guys. I'm, I'll tell on myself every time. I dreamed last night. Now don't be going around telling people I have four husbands, because that's not even true. But I dreamed it's symbolic. I don't have four husbands and I've not been married and divorced four times. So this is not this is symbolic, but I dreamed that I had four husbands and I could, I don't know who they were, 
but I knew that they were husbands. And what it meant was, it was, uh, this was last night. Uh, they were, you can be married to something. You know, you can be married to something and it's not a person. Have you ever heard people say, you know, I'm married, I'm married to my job. You know, like they're completely dedicated. They have a covenant with this, or I've been married to my ministry. You know, that, in other words, that's their soul purpose that's where they give their attention to their love their focus their everything and so I had four husbands in this dream and in this dream two of them had died and the other two were dying and I could feel this and I was bent over wailing mourning like just total wailing this was last night just wailing and mourning because my husbands <laughs> had died and were dying. But let me tell you, the moment my eyes popped open, I knew prophetically what it meant. And let me tell you, if God's doing it with me, he's going to do it with you. I knew that what I saw dying and what was dead was the things in my life I've been in covenant with that was keeping me from the plan of God in my life. As we grow from child, toddlers to children, to teenagers, to young adults, to whatever, we all have said things, been in covenant with, came in agreement with, with the, with the enemy that sits at the temple of the North, right? And we, we, once, once we come in agreement and make covenant with something, then it begins to take root in our life. Y'all agree with that? And so what happens is you become, uh, you know what a marriage is? A marriage is becoming one, all right? Spiritually, and in other words, you come in agreement with that. It's a contract deal. It's a vow. And so as soon as my eyes popped open, I began, I jumped out of my bed and I was so happy and I was so excited and I was going, praise God. I was seeing four different demons in my life that I was in covenant with, I, I hope I'm saying this right, throughout my whole life, that I maybe I, uh, uh, I don't know their names, I don't know exactly, but what it was, was God was showing me, my flesh is dying, that is the decreasing, there's things that maybe it was a religious mindset that I had, maybe it was uh, uh, an anger that I had back in my 20s because Lord knows I was angry back then uh, because I've been asking the Lord all this time y'all know my trumpet Lord help me to increase help me to uh, in you and decrease in myself help me I want perfect relationship I want when I stand before you to mirror you I want you to see yourself well in order that for that to happen Rana has to die and everything in my life that's not like Christ has to die. And it, I saw four different covenants. Do I remember exactly who they were or what they were or how or no, no, I don't. It does not matter to me. Does it matter? It doesn't matter. What matters is that if it's not his plan, if it's not his will, if it's not his word written up on the tablets of my heart, I don't want it. Something, I need to testify, something is changing in my life. And let me testify this, because this death is taking place, because there is no resurrection without death. The whole 14 books of the Bible that Paul wrote, the whole New Testament is about you dying and being resurrected in Christ. The whole book, the whole time, that's the whole book, the whole New Testament. And so when I dream that, we want the things of our flesh, our carnal spirits, our carnal emotions to die. And we want him and his life and his Holy Spirit to be resurrected in us. And guess what? It's happening now. That's the season prophetically that we're in. Yes, there's demons out there assigned. 
to attack people's mental, to attack what they believe. But for all of us on this Zoom and everybody else has an ear to hear what the word of the Lord is saying, wherever they're at, it is time to grow up and be the church of Jesus Christ. And when we step into that, I promise you every yes and amen in that Bible will become live and forever alive in your life. Everything that he says he is will come chasing you down. Y'all know this. Y'all have seen it in my life. Um, I needed I needed two U-Haul trucks, 36 footers to move me. An hour and 20 minutes one way, four trips. You know how much gas that is? And yet a man, I don't know, don't know my husband, said, here's my trucks. Here's the gas. Y'all know, I've, I, told you, I testified this. Some people that I've only met one time calls my mother-in-law and says, is Ron and Jason moved into their house? Because our family is a professional paint crew. We want to come down and stay for a week and paint her house for her. I didn't ask for it. You know what the rest will do? So I don't believe this. Let me tell you something. Before you can think it, it's already on its way to you. Before whatever, when you desire it, have you, you know the scripture, you ask anything in my name, in my nature. He's talking about your belief. If you, he said, when you pray, believing, you shall have it. Not just when you pray. When you pray, believing, you should have it. That's why the enemy that's released is mental. He's after your belief. He don't care if you're praying. But if you're actually believing what you're praying, that's when he's, that's what he's upset about. Anyway, I can keep talking about this all night. But I I'm going to let you go. I'm going to, um, we had a, a booster come in on um, UPS tonight. It's actually sitting on my front porch, cell phone booster. Maybe I can get more signal. If it doesn't work, I'm going to drive to the lodge. I felt out here our roads are too icy so i decided to try to wing it tonight um but we're going to continue in this this is going to be our best year ever say it this is going to be my best year ever now say it like you mean it i can see your face by the way there you go aunt beverly i can see your face and i know where y'all live well, most of you <laughs> say, yeah, but you don't know the day I've been. You don't know what, what the situation I'm facing. Then prophesy. This is going to be my best year ever. I'm going to be in that rest. I'm going to be in the rest. In the name of Jesus. All right, guys. I'm going to go before it just cuts me off. I love you guys so very much and i appreciate you i appreciate those who partner with us in prayer and i appreciate you for those that partner with us in every which way um we are our schedule is filling up i've got new doors we're going to myrtle beach april 9th i can't remember all my dates but we're we're going somewhere lots of places <laughs> And my husband, he will be joining me this year. He does exist. Doesn't he, Pastor Steve in Iowa? He does exist. Aunt Beverly, doesn't he really exist? Jason is a real person, not a figment of my imagination. <laughs> I had somebody tell me that. They said, you know, Sister Ron, we've seen you for years, but you keep talking about your husband. We don't know if he really exists. Andrew, you've been in my house. He exists, doesn't he? <laughs> and can the man preach andrea y'all will never want to hear from me again pastor lisa pastor chris once you meet jason and hear him preach if y'all start booking him instead of me we are no longer friends <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> 
but he is joining me and he will eventually also take a couple of these zooms and help me with them he's more of your bible teacher bless y'all's heart i'm not a bible teacher i don't claim to be i like to slap people around and shock them a few times and then go then leave town <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of my ministry but anyway um he is jason is more of your teacher and he's he's um uh, very strong and he's very knowledgeable and he's very kind and very sweet i'm the one you have to watch out for unfortunately but anyway let me say this I want you to put a pen and paper besides your bed, because I don't know if this is going to happen to all of you, but the Lord is just to release some dreams and some prophetic words to you at night. So be ready. I don't know if that's for one of you or some of you. Praise God for all of you, but he's getting ready to release. I just heard the Lord say, I'm getting ready to release myself to them and speak to them. So be ready. Be sure and write it down. Be sure and date it. Be sure and do that. And um, I heard that Miss Wilson, Miss Casey Wilson, actually ministered at her church. As soon as I get some signal, I can't wait to watch that, Casey. I love you more than anything. And uh, I know she is powerful. Her parents are powerful. So I'm excited to hear that. So be sure, Casey, and put your pen and paper beside your bed. In Jesus' name, Courtney. She's up here in Indiana. She is a best friends with my sister, Joanna. And Courtney, I just love you. And I'm so glad that you get on here on Monday nights and Miss Jojo and Angela and Donna and Pastor Steve and um, everybody. I can't see everybody. There's, I think there's 25 people on here. I can't see all 25, but Aunt Laura, Aunt Beverly, uh, Goldinger, I'm excited that everybody on here, the Wilsons, all the Wilsons kids are on here. A lot of them are on here. I believe I thank you guys for your time and I bless, I bless your life. I bless your life in Jesus name, in Jesus name, in Jesus name, Jocelyn, be sure and put some paper by your bed in Jesus name, in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jocelyn, your baby boy. Uh, this is Pastor Chris's grandson. He is getting ready to be more vocal with the things of the Lord. Um, don't count it strange. He's getting ready to say things. He's still going to be his. Hi, darling. There he is. He's still going to be his little self you know he's not going to change his personality but he's going to say things that's going to kind of uh, put you in your tracks a little bit because there's going to be a uh, prophetic a season in his life god is going to use him at a very young age but he's going to he's stepping into something god's just going to open his eyes and he's going to say things that's going to blow your mind and but he won't know what he's saying and there may be a couple of things you're not going to understand. Blake, you're going to have to talk about it and get into the word about it and stuff like that. But within the next 30 days, that baby is getting ready to have an encounter with the Lord. And um, he, his personality won't change, but he is going to say things that you know there's no way he knows about it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name, in Jesus name, hallelujah. I'm trying to let you go, hold on. In Jesus name, we give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. Pastor Wilson, that when I was there at your church, the Lord said you were gonna make deposits into the people and it won't be at the end of the year, but it's quickly, it's probably already happening that you're seeing the return of some of those deposits. There's going to be a manifest of, uh, remnant people stand in your church. You're going to feel more of a, a strength from people 
coming from the from from people you know pastors like to feel the strength of their people and there's going to be a strength coming in Jesus name in Jesus name hallelujah 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 just send I know she's probably at work but she's on here Jacinda is a sweet friend of mine. She's married to Pastor Stephen Taylor. He's blessed beyond measure because she is gorgeous. And the woman can cook, but she's a powerhouse. And the Lord um, is telling me, Jacinda, that uh, your intercession is going to a next next dimension. Even the way you pray in, the, in tongues, you're going to hear a new sound. A new song is coming. Uh, from your mouth in Jesus name, a new sound, a new tongue. There's a new tongue. And I hope you understand what I'm saying. I think she does um, a new sound in the name of Jesus. You know, when you pray in the spirit, sometimes you, you hear the same sound from you, you have your sound. Hers is getting ready to change because she's prophesying to a territory. She's prophesying to a territory that belongs to her and Pastor Stephen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Candace Johnson, don't you give up. Don't you give up. You keep moving. You keep going. You keep fighting. You got a powerful, powerful little family there. That's why the enemy's constantly after you. But it's time to go into that rest. I want you to stretch forth your hands. And let's pray for Candace. Father, in the name of Jesus, I know she's on here. In Jesus' name, Michael Shatarabasaya, Ikorebo Sota, enough is enough. In the name of Jesus, I pray over her husband, her girls, her family right now. In the name of Jesus, I pray for understanding. Candace, you're, you, you're battling in revelation. You're battling in understanding. I speak clarity right now in the name of Jesus. I speak clarity in the name of Jesus. Candace, our Lord said that you have asked him for a friend, a, like a girlfriend, like a, someone uh, close. You've been asking him for uh, uh, closeness. Um, with, I don't know if you even know who it is, but like you need like a, a, um, and I know you have your mama and you have your family, but you like, um, like another shoulder, another, uh, running pal, pal, God is going to bring to you someone else in your life. That's going to be a strength, a strength to you in the name of Jesus. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The enemy is lying to you, Candace, that you're alone. Even when you're in a crowd full of people, you're alone. That's a lie. Stop listening to the voices in your temple. You're not alone. In Jesus' name. Amen. I wish y'all could see my sweatshirt. It says country is cornbread. <laughs> so my Kentucky church, because I always tell my Kentucky church, y'all, y'all country is cornbread. So they got me a sweatshirt with the state of Kentucky on it in camouflage. And underneath it says country is cornbread. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, guys, I love you. I'm going to go and pray this snow and ice melts. Go, Dinger. It's so good to see your face. I love you. Can't wait to get back to Kansas. Y'all be praying for Pastor John Meadows. Y'all met him, John Meadows. Pastor Meadows, his father, passed away a couple of days ago. So we were praying for that family. We were, we were talking with him on the phone. I got to pray for Pastor David Meadows just moments before he passed away he was a wonderful man he brought me there into the state of kansas and, and even when people were wanting me to leave kansas pastor meadows kept me coming in <laughs> so i i'm just very we're going to keep that that family in prayer all right guys i love you i'm gonna go next monday we're gonna go deeper 
we're we're gonna have some guests coming up uh just as soon as we can um we we also want to keep in prayer real real quick you probably have seen it on facebook i've heard about it but um i got to spend some time with josh joshua christmas um last summer but pastor joshua is um pastor kent christmas and candy christmas is kent christmas son and he passed away today and he has a wife and two little children and uh he's in hendersonville or nashville and um i saw him at a, at the swimming pool actually i took aaron and amanda's kids down to the swimming pool and uh, he came over and sat and talked to me for a while. And that was the last time I saw him, which was this past summer. But he, he's passed away. So be sure and pray for that church. He was a, a pastor with his dad at their, that big church there in Hendersonville. Um, that's, uh, they're the Isaacs pastor. So we want to pray for that church and their family and all that other. And I love you. And I'm going to say good night, Star. Good night, Char. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Love you. See y'all later. Bye, Char. Bye.